All right, guys, welcome back to Hobson's Choice Harleys. Uh, been a busy couple of weeks around the shop. Bought the 41 knucklehead. I've been just kind of itemized, gone through all the parts. Basically, I bought six or eight milk crates full of 1941 knucklehead parts, and I've been really lucky. About 95% of this bike has been here. As you can see here, the heads, I've already been through both the heads. I'm almost done reassembling. Beautiful shape. 83 years old exactly they're pretty nice so this one's about done i've still got to put the gaskets and assemble these rocker covers this one's just about done as well i haven't painted this one yet because i do have a small repair right here that i have to do so i'm gonna get that welded up and then i can finish assembling this head you know i've started buying some parts here's my original lifter blocks and they've been chromed they're pretty well pitted and they have they're cracked right here and the other one's cracked in two places and the lifters themselves were blown so i went ahead and bought the full kit so there's the new lifter blocks i've got the new lifters i've got the new push rods i've gone through my fly weights and i've cleaned all these up and i've wire brushed them down i've got a new crank pin i should be here this week i've got my pinion shaft i've got my sprocket shaft all my bearings bushings washers spacers so basically that whole bottom end i'm going up to colorado and my buddy doc wellbond who's a master mechanic from harley davidson owned his own shop for many 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 years is going to help me do the bottom end. I've done a lot of top ends, a little nervous about doing a bottom end, especially with the tolerances as tight as they are, and this being an 83-year-old OEM knucklehead. It's not something you want to make a mistake on. It's not a learning curve. So I'm going to go up there and get some professional knowledge on how to put that together and take me from a shade tree mechanic maybe up to next level. Be nice. I'm also going to try and buy a truing stand while I'm up there so I can start doing my own flywheels. So that's the knuckle. That's where we've been working on. As you can see, this is our 1980 FXWG. That whole bike has been ripped apart. I took this bike in and on, on trade. My camera tech guy has been gone for a few days and while he was gone, I ripped this bike apart. All honesty guys, I pulled this bike apart to recoup some of the money for the knucklehead. I didn't plan on buying that bike and I, you know, it was a dream come true machine. I couldn't pass it up. So I hemorrhaged a lot of money to make that happen. So this bike got torn apart. The frame is sold. The engine and transmission have already left. The front end, there's a gentleman coming today to look at the front end. And as you can see, this parts wall has gotten a whole lot fuller. We got a lot more doodads, you know, from change guards to handlebar risers, either pullbacks or straights, battery tray, linkage arms, freeway pegs, you name it. The wall is getting fuller and fuller. Cat's eye dash, that's going on my survey car, or it might go on the knucklehead. Got a couple of panhead or knucklehead primaries. A little beat up, but you'd be amazed what a little elbow grease will do to those. Get those back together. Not sure which one I'm going to run, and I do have a couple others. The cream of the crop is going on the 41, and the other ones might stay wall hangers, or they might get sold if somebody needs them. Sorted stuff. We got kickstands. Over here, we got forward controls. We got dashes. We got horns. We got regulators. More kickstands. More handlebars. These lower forward controls are from a 1980 FX. WG. They're very type specific with this bracketry. If you've got a wide glide shovel head, these are, I'm not going to say gold, but they are hard to find the right bracketry. You can go with an aftermarket forward control, but these are your plug and play. These, this set down here, you, you bolt these right up to your 1980 frame and everything works the way it did coming out of the factory. The parts are just stacked again. I cleaned up the whole shop over here, all that knucklehead stuff, and then I turn around and just start stacking stuff again. So over here is the rest of that 1980 shovel head. So there's a OEM set of tins, aftermarket starter. There's an OEM dash. I've got the inner and outer primary with the scorpion clutch. I'm keeping these because that's a really nice setup rear fender front fender so there's a complete set of tens if somebody's wanting a low end set of tens just to get a bike together i've got all the electronics and the sissy bar the progressive shocks good stuff shovel head pipes i've got six or eight sets of those if you're looking for a set of pipes this is what's left of miami vice if you guys have watched our videos this too has sold the frame is sold. I sold the 1980 and the 1972 frame to the same guy. So I'm actually delivering those to him in Cal or in Arizona here 
week after next. This motor is being held for a buddy of mine in Texas, Mitchell Norman. He's a good guy. He's got a really cool rigid frame. He's wanting to build a chopper for, so I'm holding this motor and this ratchet top for him. They've totally been rebuilt. Super strong transmission and motor. Good, good for a, a young guy like Mitchell who's starting his first custom build. So we've been a lot going on here. You know, we've been real busy. Here's our knuckle. She made it to the lift. So we got her to the lift and probably what we're going to start doing is I want to pull this oil bag and fender that are just, I just have them finger tight on there. I'm going to pull this rear wheel off and I'm still not sure if I'm going to run this star hub wheel with the mechanical brake setup. So this is all mechanical arms. This goes like this. This shaft turns on the other side. There's a rod on the other side. Let's walk around. I'll show you guys. So that rod turns through here and connects to this rod, which turns this down. So when you hit the brakes, that's what stops you. It's nice that it's all original OEM stuff. The part that's not nice is they don't stop worth the crap. So I'm going to dry fit. I do have this five spoke invader. It's brand new. It's never been on a bike. And this brand new juice brake. So this is 1958 through 1972 juice brake. It is a drum brake. It is meant to bolt onto the same five hole pattern that the mechanical brake does. So basically these should be interchangeable. And I'm also going to pull this old jammer front end off of this bike and probably put Miami Vice's front end, which is hiding over here in the corner. And it's got the matching brand new five spoke invader. So I'm going to try out this narrow glide front end on that knucklehead, see what it looks like. And then I'll have front brakes, rear brakes, and they'll all be hydraulic. So I'll be able to stop this machine. So that's kind of the direction we're going here today. Kickstart the like button and keep watching. We appreciate all the comments and suggestions and, uh, HCH, we just keep on going. All right, guys, so just to show you, when I got this knucklehead, so many of the parts I found were all in these buckets. I found two of the old meatloaf metal containers that were actually, they had curtain rod hooks in them, some screwdriver bits, just looked like junk. And they were completely had been rusted over from sitting in a garage in 30 years up in Colorado. So I got there and I started going through stuff. And if you look, I've been painstakingly looking and working on this. Every one of these gears was in a bucket of rust. All these oil pump parts, I didn't think I had the oil pump. And once I started going through everything, the pump was there, all the gears were there, the spacer, the cover, the sending unit. So all of that stuff was there in these old bread or meatloaf pans. All of these gears. I do have a new cam coming. I'm not going to rerun that. But everything here that just moves like butter now, all of that, even my breather gear, everything I found just by diligently going through. The first video when I got this thing back, I had everything laying out here on the floor. And we did kind of a an inventory of a, a video of some of the stuff. And I figured I was lucky if I had 60% of the mechanical stuff of this bike. I have found 98% of it and most of it's usable. You can see here, this is my pinion shaft that comes off the crank. And this set in a vapor rust for two days and it's not usable. It's so pitted. I've got a new one coming, but the spring load, the interchangeable spring load on it is usable. Both your top gear and your spiral gear that hooks to your oil pump is usable. All your cam chest gears are usable. So really I've only got a few shafts and a lot of bushings and bearings and seals to buy. And this lower end will be complete. And I say that because over here, when I started working through all those pieces and parts, I was trying to figure out how this oil bag mounted because this is an aftermarket jammer frame. And again, I found pieces like this that were completely rusted. So everything I've done on this bike, I've put every nut, bolt, washer, bracket in a vapor rust, soaked it for 24 hours, and then hit them on a wire brush. And I figured that these, I figured it out piece by piece. This is what holds the back end of that oil bag. Because if you look at this fender up here, this fender is pre-made with these brackets to bolt in here. Down in here, I don't know if you can see it, those two holes actually are going to hold that bracket to the fender. And then this other bracket, which is just a piece of angle iron, is going to sandwich in between it. And all that's going to tie together to hold that back into that oil bag together. Kind of a cool setup. Very cool setup. I do still have the 
original insert for a six volt knucklehead or panhead battery. So I'm going to run that, but I'm probably going to run an anti-gravity battery in here. This is going to be a kick only bike, so I don't need a whole lot of cold cranking amps. I just need to get a little battery, but I am going from six volt to 12 volt. I'm going to convert this. I've already got a cycle electric generator with the regulator built into it. So trying to make this as a dependable bike as I can for its age. So we're going to go ahead and pull this oil bag off and it is an oil tank. I hear some guys say oil tank or they'll ask me what I'm talking about when I say oil bag. I guess that's just old school. I've always heard these as being oil bags, not oil tanks, but tomato, tomato, right guys? So we're going to try and get this off of here and see if we can't change out that rear wheel today. And this one, I'm not too worried about blue paint because I've got one blue bike. You guys are familiar with Soft Tail Sally. She's blue. I've got Miami Vice I tore apart. She's blue. And now I bought this knucklehead. She's blue. I'm not into that much blue, guys. So Soft Tail Sally's gorgeous, but she's my only turquoise bike. The rest of these are coming apart and going a different color. To be determined, I'm actually pretty much guaranteed on this bike that she's going to be a really high metallic, super high metallic gold. In fact, me and the wife have already laughed and lovingly named her Goldilocks. So this is Goldilocks, the 41 knucklehead, and she's going to be sexy. If any of you guys have watched my older videos with uh, my 62 pan head, my 62 pan head is that high metallic silver, high flake silver metallic. So I'm going to do that same level, uh, only in a nice deep gold color. So that's where we came up with Goldilocks for this one. So there's our oil bag out. And I talked to you about all that color because I'm not too concerned about dinging this up. These have never been ran. They still have the masking tape on the uh, all the fittings and stuff, but I'm not running it. It's all gonna get blast, sandblasted down and redone. In fact, I might just put a newer set of three and a half tanks on there. These have that cream or pour 15, whatever, one of those liners in there. And it wasn't really well done. And I personally am not a fan of that liner crap anyway. Some people swear by tank liner. Me personally, I've always been told, and I'm of the school, if you keep your gas tanks full in the winter, they don't have any reason or way to rust. Each their own. So simple brackets, like I told you, these were unrecognizable. They were just two horseshoes of rust. So I have every nut and bolt on this machine. You know, I can't count the hours already, and I just started on this machine, just cleaning up nuts and bolts, brackets, and dissecting where all these nuts, bolts, and brackets go. Another thing on the hip parade is I need to pull this transmission off. I'm going to pull the top off of it. I'm gonna pull the kicker off of it. Going to inspect it and see it shifts through all the gears, so I don't think I have to go into anything. I do wanna check the end play on the counter shaft and the main shaft, just make sure I'm sound. But more than anything, I just need a couple gaskets and, and a flush, and hopefully this is ready to run. Who knows? I mean, these are 80 plus year old parts. This might get torn down and be a total rebuild just like the engine i don't know so kind of nice that it's a rigid frame because i can sit it on my deck here and pull that rear wheel without shock absorbers and stuff springing and flinging and all of that so we're going to pull off the uh, chain here in a minute get a close-up of that chain just for comparison so that chain is in far better shape than most of the stuff that came on this bike and it's rusted this chain here was three times worse than that chain it wouldn't articulate at all it was literally a rusted pile like that. You couldn't even hardly tell it was a chain. Probably gonna replace it, but I did just soak that for a day in Evaporust and oiled it and uh, kind of cool. So this chain, I'm gonna pull off and do the same thing. If you look over here on the wall, I've got four uh, rear chains there. They're not worth running, but I don't want to throw them. I don't know. They used to make, seen some cool guys make belts out of those for your, like literally for your pants. So hold your pants up. Weld two of those together. They make a cool belt. I don't know. Maybe I'll get the welder out and do some kind of modern art. Foo foo. Who knows? But uh, that's my next step is to get this chain off and pull this rear wheel and see where we go. Let's see if we can find the master link. That's sometimes a challenge. Looking, looking, looking. Wow, this chain is ancient. And there she is right there. So we're going to see if we can get that off of there see how rusted it is i'll have to get over on this side of it all right guys had to take a pause i had guys show up wanted some parts so every part i sell of my old inventory lets me buy more stuff for this knuckle so we're back at it we're gonna try and get this rear wheel off of here wow if i can get this rusty old chain off we'll see it's moving but it ain't moving much well 
There we go. All right, so we got that off. Now we're gonna have to convince it to come out of there. I had a punch up here yesterday. Be damned if I can find it. There we go. Wow. There she goes. All right. One crusty old chain. So we'll stick this up here with the rest of the crusty old chains. Any of you art guys want a crusty old chain collection for welding, let me know. I'll make you a heck of a deal. Okay, so we're gonna pull off this cotter pin, brake assembly. Come on. All right. So we're gonna try and leave that where we don't lose it. I've had good luck putting the spacer in there for now. And then before I unbolt this, because I'm not sure what wheels I'm going to run, just taking pictures of the spacer orientation. That way I can get her centered. I know she ran pretty true right where that was at. And let's see what flavor we got here. Nope. So we're going to have to do the old tried and true. See, again, you can see all this rust. This whole thing will all get soaked in the evaporust, all these adjusters. So far with the evaporust and a wire wheel, and I say wire wheel, but I actually use a brass wheel. My buddy Doc taught me that, that you don't, don't use a, a steel wheel on your grinder because it will take metal off, where the brass just takes ugly. So that's what I've done. And I want to lay this on here. See, I don't want to... Don't want to booger up those threads. Let's see. I'm trying to remember, it's been a minute. I have to take these five bolts off inside here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the drum and the wheel and separating them. Pull the wheel out, then you pull the drum off. So I do have to get inside there. And let's hope I can find the stuff to do that because it's kind of, kind of a tough process. So that's a remembering right is a 7 sixteenths. And when I was looking through parts, I actually had a brand new set of colony. That's what these bolts are for. That's the five bolts that hold the drum to the star wheel hub or the mid star. They're both the same. Yeah, so that is a 7 16 All right, you guys made it to the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please kickstart that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered, and I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.